Well, hello YouTubers, gold lovers, Mike here. Welcome back to my channel again. And it's time for more smash o -matic action. Got to run some uh, more ore through it. Now this is uh, material got from the waste pile of a mine out in Wyoming that uh, was really active back in the late 1870s, early 1880s. Really rich mine. The assay reports were astronomical for this stuff when they first started mining it. Of course, they mined out all of the really rich stuff fairly early on. The mine played out, and they mined various other commodity metals out of it for a while, but then they shut it down way back when, like early part of the 20th century. It's just been sitting there rotting away ever since. But um, based on the assay reports, I wanted to get some samples off the waste piles out there. I was hoping that the old timers, when they were mining that really rich stuff, were throwing away some stuff that wasn't worth their effort. So we'll see what's in these rocks here. I'll tell you what, we brought back some a fairly large sample from this mine, and I was breaking up the bigger pieces to make them small enough to fit in the old smash o here. And when I smashed this one with a hammer, I could see some sparklies in it. I went out in the sun, and I looked at those sparklies with my loop. There's gold in this stuff. So this piece definitely has some gold in it. And I'm hoping that a lot of these pieces in here have some gold in them too. So I'm going to run some of these through the smash o -matic and pan it out and see what we can find. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the mine um, that we got this stuff when we get over there to the panning, panning area. Um, I'll show you the setup. It's pretty much the same as in the last video, which I'll put a link to that last video in the upper right. Uh, uh, we got the uh, dust deputy cyclone separator here and my little vacuum over there. So that's all going to pull the dust out of the smash o -matic. It's going to smash these hard quartz rocks to dust and it's going to be pulled out and it's going to stay in the dust deputy and very little is going to make it over to the uh, vacuum cleaner to plug up its filter. So we should have good suction throughout this whole process and get this stuff processed pretty darn quickly, I'm hoping. So let me get ready to go. We'll get this party started. Okay, let me get the vacuum started. Smash o -matic started. Start feeding rocks with lots of sulfides in this stuff. Rusty sulfides. Good stuff.
a good feeling when something you designed and built works just so well. It is going through this stuff, and I have been running a lot of hard ports through the old smash o -matic lately, and it's just not missing a beat. Um, it's it's just killing it over here, so that's that's great. Anyway, I'm not going to make you watch me run this whole bag of material through here. I'll just be back when I think I've got enough good representative sample for two, three, four pans worth in the uh, dust deputy down here, okay? And uh, let me continue running stuff through here. Some of these pieces I think are a little too big, so I might skip them and bust them up later. But uh, I'm going to run some more of this stuff through and make sure I get a good representative sample. All right, I'll meet you at the panning table when I'm done. Well, there's enough material in there to get a, a few pans. That'll tell me how much gold's in this stuff. And if it looks pretty good, I'll turn the rest of it into dust and pan it out too. So let's take it over to the panning table and see what we got. Okay, I think I've got everything I need over here. For a change, I do think I have it all. I usually forget something, but I got my mining magnet, uh, my stuffer bottle, got some jet dry for in the water, my loop, my favorite pan. And I've got a, a 10 mesh screen here. I'm going to screen this stuff through there because um, there is a 3 16 inch screen on the outlet of the smash o -matic. So we do get some, some big pieces coming through. And they just get in the way when you're panning this fine stuff, which is where I expect to find the gold. Panning really works much better when you classify stuff to roughly the same size. You get much better separation. Oh yeah, there's some, some big pieces there. I'll save those just in case. It turns out that uh, there's a lot of gold in this stuff. I'll run those big chunks back to the smash o -matic again and see if I can turn them into dust. Okay. Let's, uh, let's do some panning. Okay, a little bit of jet dry in the water. It's going to help uh, reduce the surface tension of the water, and that helps us with a couple of things. It helps wet this stuff, which is, a lot of this is like talcum powder fine, and it's a little hydrophobic. So the jet dry helps it all get good and wet. It needs to be wet for panning. Can't have any dry spots in there. And also it'll help prevent fine gold from floating. Fine gold will float if it gets half a chance. It will float on the surface tension of the water. Just like those little bugs can skim across the water standing on it with their little legs. So let me get this panned out. I'll tell you a little bit about this mine. I have really high hopes for it because it was a really rich mine back in the day, but we're talking like 1870s, 1880s. They mined out that rich stuff pretty quickly. They got into a lot less rich stuff. But I'm hoping those waste piles outside the mine have some pretty good stuff in them that they were digging through on the way to the uh, really rich stuff. I mean, they might have been digging in some stuff they didn't think was worth their while when they were going for the glory hole, you know? And I've talked in previous videos, and I'll put a link to another one, where I talked about the importance of my, uh, mapping out these old mine properties. And I got some really good feedback from you guys about that. I need to map out this mine property before we go back there. If it turns out that there's enough gold in here to make it look like it's worthwhile going back to. Because it's a fairly complicated property, not as complicated as some of the others I've done, where there's like 15, 20 different uh, waste piles and... Uh, what not. This one's a little less complicated, but oh, I think it's only less complicated because somebody's gone at it with a bulldozer in the not too distant past and leveled out a lot of the waste piles. I don't know if somebody's reprocessing those piles or it's a half-hearted attempt at reclaiming the mine. I'm not sure what's going on there. But uh, the waste has been kind of gathered into one place and moved around, so I can't really get a good chronological idea on where most of that waste came from. Whether it was early on or later. You know, I would think the early on stuff might be richer than the later stuff when the good gold had about played out. So, there is one area that's really interesting though. They built a causeway um, that had 
originally had tracks on it and they would push the ore carts down these tracks and they dumped the waste pile and they just kept extending the causeway as they went and um, obviously the stuff at the beginning of the causeway back by the mine would be newer than the stuff towards the end of the causeway that would be older so I need to go back and I need to sample along the length of that causeway and see if there's places where it's richer than others so you know if it looks like there's anything in here at all I might go do that but I mean that mine looking at the old assay reports that mine was so rich back in the day that you know it's hard to believe that there can't be something still out there in those old waste piles something that either they they intentionally threw away because they thought it wasn't worth their while compared to the stuff they were going after or just stuff they dug through without really paying much attention to it on the way to get to the rich stuff you know and just the occasional rich stringer in the uh, in the gang rock it, it, you know there was so much gold pulled out of that mine it's hard to believe that there wouldn't be anything of any value on those waste piles so definitely want to go back there and uh, look at them what am I seeing here hmm, just some chunks of uh, red sulfide I guess Let me clean this up a little bit there's definitely a lot of sulfides in here that's for sure. Let's see if I can uh, get the gold into the top corner of the pan there and uh, wash some of these sulfides off. If there's any gold, I want to move it into that top corner of the pan and wash the sulfides off. I should say if. I haven't seen any yet. chunks here. Might need to screen it smaller than 10 mesh. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Yeah, oh. Oh, holy cow. Oh, I think I see lots of gold. Let me go out in the sun and look with the loop and try and get you a look with the macro on the phone. Maybe it'll show up. Maybe it won't. Okay, hopefully this is going to show up. All right, most of this stuff here is sulfides. But above the sulfides, right up at the corner of the pan, there are a lot of little flakes of gold in there. Very nice. Very nice for the first pan. Okay, cool. Let me get this sucked up in the snuffer bottle and do another pan. Yeah, there's a lot of gold in this pan. Holy cow. Again, the pieces are small, but there's certainly a lot of them in there. Hey, I'll take small gold. I'll take a lot of small gold all day long. It'll add up. Get it all. No, I don't think I did. Corral it up in that corner and snuffer it up. Okay. All right. Got at least one more pan in that bucket. Maybe two. Let's see what we get. Hopefully more of the same. Okay, the lighting is not cooperating too much, but I did a little better job of getting the sulfides out of the way. All that stuff up there. Almost all that stuff up there. That's gold. That's gold. Just below that corner of the pan. All that stuff there. It's gold. There's a lot of gold in this pan. Great. Excellent. Yeah, more of the same. Like I said, there's a lot of gold in there. Right up 
at that top corner of the pan there. It's a lot of gold in there. Very nice. I got at least one more pan to do. Excellent. Okay, three good pans so far. Excellent. A lot of fine gold in the snuffer bottle. I'm also snuffering up those sulfides that are staying up there with the gold. Sooner or later, I will uh, smelt all the stuff in this snuffer bottle, get the gold, and get uh, any gold that's hiding out in those sulfides too. Starting to get a fair amount in the snuffer bottle, so sooner or later, I'm gonna have to do it. Okay, got at least one more pan. Let's get on it. Okay, I would say this is only, yeah, one more pan. Okay, so let's get this one done see what's in it. You know, I only processed probably, I don't think even half the rock to get four pans of material here. It's amazing how much the volume goes up when you pulverize it into powder. So, I can go back and run the rest of it. It's getting late in the day, but I can go back and run the rest of it another day, pan it out, get the rest of the gold out of it. This mine is looking like one of the ones I want to go back to because the amount of gold I'm seeing in these samples, and these samples were collected from all over the place. They were collected from the ore piles that have been moved around. They've been collected from various points on the causeway. So, you know, like I was saying, if I go back out there and map out the mine and take samples from different spots, Maybe I can find spots that have more gold than others. Maybe all this gold came from just one or one or two spots. Who knows? Or maybe there's one or two spots that have a lot more gold than on average. So I'll get it mapped out next time we're out there. Take samples from different points, document it all, and uh, figure out where the gold's coming from. So in the future, we go back there. We just go to the richest parts of the mine. Okay, let me get this panned out, and I'll give you a look at what's left. Okay, I've done a little better job of panning back the sulfides in this pan. I hope you can see the color of that gold up there. There's dozens and dozens and dozens of pieces of gold back up there in that back corner of the pan. Dozens and dozens of them. They're small, but there's a lot of them. Wow. Wow. Okay, it's a pretty good pan. Happy with that? Alrighty, four really good pans. Nice. We're definitely going back to that mine. Like I said, going to map it out. Find out where the really good stuff is. And load up with it. I figured the old timers must have left us some gold out there. Considering how much they were pulling out in the old days with their old technology. I figured they weren't getting all of it. Okay. I had a thought, and you guys let me know what you think. Give it a thumbs up, a thumbs down, whatever. I had a thought about um, getting some of this material from Wyoming, grinding it up in the smash matic and maybe selling little bags of pay dirt for people to pan out at home. Let me know if you're interested in that or if you think it's a stupid idea, okay? So, let me know. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of what I'm doing here. Always open to suggestions and constructive criticism, too. So, uh, go ahead and comment away. Well, I hope you found this video interesting, educational, informative, inspirational. Killed some time, whatever. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to see my future gold recovery videos. And press that little bell icon that YouTube wants you to press to be notified when new videos come out. Check out my second channel. ElectroGeek64. There's good stuff going on there almost every day. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.